I finally figured out something about Ricky Nixon and why this arrogant, lying sleazebag behaved the way he did yesterday. Like the scorpion, it's in his nature. In response to increasing and damning evidence of his sexual involvement with a troubled 17-year-old, he was purporting to counsel and support, Tricky Nicky did what he always does. He called in the spin doctor. Himself. He's been doing it for money for decades. It's made him a fortune. I'm surprised somebody hasn't changed the name of his company from Flying Start to Lying Fart. Whenever there's been a drug or alcohol or sex scandal involving one of his clients, Ricky has ridden to the rescue. Gary Ablett Sr., Wayne Carey, Ben Cousins, Nick Rewalt, Sam Gilbert. Don't worry, Ricky will fix it. When a reporter had the audacity to ask Ben Cousins where he got his drugs at that Welcome Back Richmond press conference, Nixon intervened and said to Peter Morris, the reporter, What sort of knob are you? And nobody had the guts to say, I wasn't asking you. So when Nixon became the centre of a scandal this week, he again launched the attack dog. The PR man's creed, attack, is the best form of defence. The second rule, deny, deny, deny. He popped up on radio stations all over Melbourne, AM and FM, smearing the girl he was supposedly trying to mentor, denying everything, but really not answering any questions. I'm told Eddie Maguire even said, mate, you don't have to answer anything if you can't. And he didn't. Nixon cleverly tried to roll all his visits to the teenager's hotel room into one brief moment of stupidity. He said, and I quote, It was very, very, very silly. But we've all made silly mistakes. You have, you have and I have. And if I had my time again, I certainly wouldn't have pointed my car in the direction of that hotel room. With his driving record, he shouldn't be pointing it anywhere. At one stage, explaining how he stood in the lobby for 20 minutes and berated her, it sounded like he'd never, ever even been in a hotel room. Then he had been there. He couldn't or wouldn't answer what he was doing in his underpants, diving into her bed and switching off the light. I guess this is Nixon-style New Age counselling. A 47-year-old man strips to his undies when saving a 17-year-old soul. The cocaine-like powder she videoed in the room? Well, on 3AW, Nixon said... I did not use drugs in her presence. Like Clinton, I did not have sex with that woman. The video didn't show me using cocaine with her, didn't show me having sex with her, therefore couldn't have happened. He even had an explanation for the damning video footage of the girl taking a wallet out of a pair of crumpled jeans on the floor and filming the contents to prove that Nixon was there in her room without his pants on. A shower can be heard in the background. He says, that, oh, that video, oh, no, that was filmed in his office last year. Strange, when I met with him last month, and he was busy showing me photos that he took of the scantily clad and drunk teenager during that visit in that office, he didn't mention he had his pants off, or even that he'd left her alone in the room. And that meeting with me last month was the one where he repeatedly and piously expressed his concerns for the girl's well-being where he handed me an editorial he'd drafted for me to read on 3AW, saying, and I quote, the media should cease covering this story in her interests. And where he said, any man would want to F her. And ten days later she says, he did. And what comes through all of yesterday's radio and television bravado is the sheer arrogance of the man, that he thought, Despite the damning videos and the recorded conversations, he could hit the airwaves and bluster and filibuster his way totally out of it. You wonder, did he try story out on his wife first? And did she believe him? And if it were all so innocent, why was Nixon so keen for him and the girl to get their stories straight? She claims, and I believe her, that he said, we must deny all this stuff. Do it for me. If it comes out, we'll both be dead. The Herald Sun today runs a transcript of a call that Nixon made to the girl to vouch for him over an article that Caroline Wilson was going to do for The Age. The man who boasts he tapes everybody's conversations got hoist by his own petard. He says to her, and she taped it, I don't want you to go overboard, but just say, look, Ricky's been helping me get myself back together a bit, and I don't want to talk about it too much. Just sort of say something like that. And there's much more. And now, of course, the latest report is that Nixon has left the building. Not staying to face the music, reportedly gone to Ireland. 
Maybe his blarney will work there. It won't work here anymore. And the AFL must take control of this grubby mess, not hide behind the Players Association, and ban him from any involvement in any manner or any form.